start with a couple of remarks and take questions. Sure. Uh, Penn State week, uh, you know, it's the start of a new season for us in terms of uh, getting into conference play and uh, what a great opportunity we have uh, to be here home at the Shell on a Friday night. And, uh, we expect it to be a great crowd and we're excited about the opportunity that we have to play a really good team in Penn State. Um, as I talked about last week, uh, we're also excited about uh, having Coach Friedgen back uh, this week, along with all the rest of our lettermen. Um, this is our lettermen uh, game, so we'll have quite a few former players back for this one. Um, you know, our team is just coming off the bye week where we spent, you know, three practices last week really uh, cleaning up some fundamental things uh, that you see when you self scout, which we did last week. We also got a, a head start on Penn State. And obviously with it being a Friday game, our schedule's kind of been moved up a day in, in our preparation. So today for us will be a, a typical Tuesday practice for us. And uh, yesterday was a Monday practice for us. And uh, again, you know, our guys are excited uh, with the opportunity to play a really good team here at home uh, as we continue on uh, on our journey. As we talked about, um, uh, we have some uh, injury updates. Uh, in the Temple game, Jake Funk uh, tore his left ACL, which was the same ACL that he had surgery on last year. Uh, so uh, he's out for the remainder of the season. Uh, we'll be having surgery here shortly, and, and we're very hopeful, obviously, um, to be able to get the year back for him, which uh, would allow him possibly to have two more years after this season. And uh, Jake played an integral role, not just on offense, but on our special team. So that's a, a huge blow for us. but. As we uh, say with most injuries, uh, the next man up mentality has to take place. Um, you know, we got Lolo uh, Harrison, who has been a really productive player for us, who happens to be coming back off of a hamstring, uh, healthy and available to us. And so, uh, you know, we see Lolo's role increasing as he comes back from the hamstring, with Jake being out uh, to be a guy that we'll lean on. Um, not just as a, a on offense, but also in some special team situations. And uh, with that, I'll open it up to questions. The Jackers Law Group's successes have resulted in many distinguished awards, including Best Personal Injury Trial Law Firm USA, Maryland's Personal Injury Attorney of the Year twice, and Super Lawyers designation every single year. We succeed because we're willing to try cases, and insurance companies know it. That's why their claim reps often grumble they pay us more in settlements than any other lawyers. You deserve a great lawyer. If you've been hurt in a car, truck, or train crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1. This is Mason Miner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. Coach, you and I. James Franklin, go back to your coaching days here. You all still maintain a relationship, and how exciting is it that you have like your own programs and you're matching up against one another uh, this Friday night? Yeah, you know, James and I, uh, our relationship goes back, I think, to, I want to say 98 or 99 when he came um, here as a young coach. Uh, I think he was leaving Idaho State, and we were both young coaches together on Ron Vanderlinden's first staff, and then we both stayed on for Coach Friesen, and we've maintained a relationship over the years. Um, obviously, James has had great success as a head coach at Vanderbilt and now at Penn State, and so um, I'm always glad to see guys do well. And uh, again, you know, in all the games except the ones we play them in. So again, we both are uh, guys that grew up in this program here, and again, both having coached under Coach Friedgen, um, but we do have a, a, a cordial relationship. In, in terms of penalties and those kind of don't beat yourself type plays, how, what do you do apart from just talking about it and emphasizing it to, to teach that? And do you feel like you've made meaningful progress there in the bye week? Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things that we said going into this season, you know, we were one of the most penalized teams there in the country last year. And we made a big point of emphasis. And one of the things we've done is we've, you know, hired officials to come out to every practice. And so we chart our penalties during the course of practice and then we pull those plays off and again just like in any teaching or developmental program uh, we address them and so we address them on a daily basis you know after every practice we have a 
officials report where each of us, we know what penalties were called during the course of practice. We pull those plays and then again, we go into the film room as well as, you know, any of the other things we can do to uh, friendly reminders of, you know, making sure that we're not beating ourselves. And again, I think that showed up some in our last opportunity that we had. And again, we've got to get that corrected. But the big thing is, is just with having those officials at practice every day, uh, it really helps us with being able to have it uh, taught and making sure that it's emphasized not just in games, but we do it in practice as well. You know, Maryland in the past has struggled a lot, you know, against Penn State in terms of kind of, you know, offense, especially the last two years, you know, coming off of the game against Temple where the offense struggled. How um, kind of are you <clears throat> working with, you know, players and schemes, you know, in practice to kind of, you know, have things be different this year against them? Again, I mean, comparisons, I don't know about the last two years what they've done or what we've done on offense against them. Uh, again, we, we, we rarely worry about our opponent as much as we do about our execution. Um, I think we'll stick to that script. Um, the things we've got to do to prepare, uh, we've got to practice the right way. Those are the habits and behaviors we talk about. Um, how we study our opponent. You know, we've got to put together a great plan as a coaching staff and make sure that our guys have a real good comfort level with being able to execute the things that we're going to need uh, to be successful on the offensive side of the ball. And, you know, that's what we've done, you know, the first three practices last week and starting yesterday as we went into our game week prep against Penn State. Mike, in terms of uh, the, the way Josh has come back from this game and what you saw in practice in terms of your meetings with him, um, first of all, in terms of what he did on the field, do you, do you, do you look at the, the, the way the game started and, and, and did that sort of lead into all the other issues he had the rest of the day or was it just his inability to sort of see what they were doing in terms of, you know, hiding things? And, and yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I thought we maybe had a, a lot tougher looks against some of our previous opponents up into the Temple game. You know, obviously what we've tried to do with Josh is to go back and, and find out what what created the uh, what created the the, the the issues he had? I mean, again, I think I take it back to just being having the right kind of eye discipline as a quarterback in the RPO game. Um, we went back and looked at the tape. He watched it with Scotty one on one, and then he and I have had a couple meetings. But again, I, I think that that's kind of an outlier game for Josh. He's a guy that really has made really good choices uh, and, and, and been really disciplined. Um, He's had a good couple of days of practice last week. We got back to some of the fundamental things. We maybe reinstalled and reinforced, again, some of the decision-making and how and why those decisions need to be made based on where his eye discipline starts and finishes. So um, he's had a good week of work last week, and then yesterday he started off pretty good. And you know, we feel really good about the way he'll go out and execute if we continue to practice the way we practiced thus far. In the second half of the Temple game, Daryl Jones seemed to not make it on the field as much. Was he injured or was it just part of a rotation? Daryl's been injured. He has a lower leg, kind of a calf strain, so he's been battling that, uh, which, you know, when you have a bad wheel as a skilled guy, that makes it tough. Um, so he went into that game a little banged up, and uh, once we saw that he was unable to have the acceleration that he needs to play with, uh, other guys had to step up, and that's kind of where he's been. But he's been practicing this week, and we think he'll be full speed come Saturday, uh, Friday. In the back, Chris. Coach, can you talk about the matchup with Penn State? What you've seen of, of them on film? How do you match up with them, and what you have to do to be successful? Yeah, you know, I mean, they're a well-coached team um, in all three phases. You know, they've got dynamic skill at the receiver position. You know, number one is a big-time player for them. You know, they've, they've, they've got three guys. I know Justin Shorter, the big big single side receivers, about 6'4", 230 pound, really physical guy. They rotate three running backs in there, but I think it all starts with the quarterback Clifford. Um, he's a guy that can beat you with his arm and his legs. Uh, you know, he's made plays where I've seen him run away from defenses uh, as a ball carrier, but also has thrown the ball really well. You know, when you look at those guys on defense, I think up front, their front four are very concerning to us, along with the two inside backers. Their front seven, uh, very stout, very athletic. Uh, again, and, and they've got a lot of experience when you look back on the back end with the secondary as well. So, um, 
you know, Hamler also serves as a returner. So in the uh, kick game, uh, we've got to do a great job of making sure we can contain him. And, you know, again, I think these guys are a well-coached bunch and, and they got them playing at a high level. And so for us, we're going to have to obviously match them with their execution and how we approach the game. And uh, I think, you know, Friday our guys will be excited about this opportunity, but we're going to have to go out and play well uh, to have an opportunity to, to take care of business. Is there any update on Joseph Petrino? And if he can't go, does that impact some of the decisions you make in the red zone or on that half of the field? Yeah, I mean, uh, Joseph, has, he's kicked the last couple of days. He kicked yesterday. Um, so we don't foresee there being any issues there. Uh, we spent last week, we basically didn't kick him for a week and, and really just overemphasized the treatment and, and, and getting him back to where he has the comfort level of uh, his ability to go out and execute his job. We kicked them some yesterday. It was really positive. Uh, you know, with our training report this morning, there were no issues for us, so we, we expect him to be able to kick Friday night. Um, you know, your first game when you were an interim head coach was against Penn State. You know, wasn't mean you to now, you know, face Penn State as you know the solidified head coach of you know this program. I mean, not just Penn State, but as I've said before, you know, to have the opportunity to lead the University of Maryland as the head coach. It's something that I've always coveted. Um, you know, again, this is a big game for us because it's our next game, and um, you know, obviously, it's the start of conference play, and we we play in a tough league. So, uh, to open up with a team of Penn State's caliber uh, is very challenging. But I know our team is excited uh, with the opportunity to to face a good program like Penn State here at home, and we're hoping that our home crowd is uh, very active and, and gives us a competitive advantage. Uh, because it's going to take all of us. I mean, we're expecting it to be a four-quarter game, a 60-minute game, and this time with us being able to execute the way we need to to find a way to win. Mike, uh, how, how much of uh, Piggy not uh, getting in for only a couple of plays uh, against Temple had to do with his physical condition, and and what you know, how much of it was just trying to have Josh play through some of the rough rough patches, and where is Piggy physically now compared to a couple weeks ago. Yeah, Piggy Piggy's healthy, and he was a healthy scratch on Saturday, on last uh, two Saturdays ago, I guess, uh, for the Temple game. He played a couple of series for us, but he went into the game healthy. I do think that um, you know Josh is our starting quarterback, and we'll create again ways to to get Piggy involved as a game plan situation, and you know just based on how we game plan Temple. Um, you know, Piggy wasn't as involved because he missed quite a bit of the work that week. So um, he's 100% now, you know, the, the lower back issue he had, there shouldn't be any issues and he's practiced well last week and this week. And again, when he's healthy, we'll continue to try to find ways to game plan him into our offensive scheme because he is a guy that has the ability to make plays for us. And, you know, the way he's continued to develop, I think that he can help us. And if he can help us score points and move the ball, We'll find ways to keep them involved. I know it's just the next game, but with the extra bleachers out there and it being Penn State week, is there any buzz on campus? Are the guys any more jacked up than usual? Does it feel like a rivalry to you guys? I mean, we haven't been on campus. I mean, I, I'm stuck at Gossett, so I don't, I don't know what the buzz is. And uh, you know, one of the things that we've tried to do, Wayne, is to just really insulate ourselves to functioning and worrying about the things we can control you know, all the things you just talked about are things that are out of our control it's great to hear that hopefully we'll have the, the type of crowd that our players uh, deserve to have and that I know our fans are excited about this game but for us all of our focus is on being the best version of Maryland football that we can be come Friday and all the external noise and all the external uh, excitement about this game you know we're, we're looking at it no different than we've looked at the other three opportunities that we've had and that's just how we approach the game coach you, you talked a little bit about this having monday's practice be uh yesterday but playing you know extra day early does that give you any challenges as a team no because i mean it would have been difficult if we had played a game last saturday but with us coming off of a bye week it's, it's kind of uh, hasn't been an issue because we got a jump start on our game planning a week ago. Um, we got three pretty solid practices, which would typically be a, 
uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday type practice schedule for us, and then we're just doing it over again, starting yesterday with Monday, which we were did a little more than we typically would do on a Monday because of how far out in advance we are with the game planning. So because of us having the bye week prior to this Friday game, uh, it hasn't affected our preparation time. So for us, the, the days of the week, for us, it's like the days of Tuesday for us in our mind, and that's kind of how our guys have approached it. Time for two more. Thank you, Coach. Up to time. Sorry about that. Um, in, in terms of Josh, the, you, you talked about him being have that laid-back personality, too cool for school in the pocket at times. Does that help or hurt a quarterback coming back from a – uh, you know, a tough game when, when he sort of has a laid back personality or, or, or does it not play into it at all? I don't think it plays into it. I mean, that's just kind of, as I've said, you know, it's my experience and I like, I like that quarterback that feeds and has the energy. Um, Josh has got to play to his personality and just like as a coach, I've got to coach to my personality and we both kind of have a happy medium there. I think he understands how he needs to play in our system, and you know I have no doubt in my mind. You know, the laid-back personality is who he is. Um, uh, he's played well with it, and you now he's you know maybe had a, a, a not as good a game as he's had the first two opportunities out. But I don't think we need to hit the panic button or, or change who he is, or I don't need to change who I am as a coach. And uh, you know my expectation based on how he's practiced thus far is that. Uh, He'll be able to go out and execute the offense in, a, in the manner that he's done uh, the first couple of opportunities we've had. And, and you know, I thought even in the Temple game, when you go back and look at it, he worked himself through some tough situations and ended up making some some big plays for us there in the third quarter when we needed it. And as I told him, I mean, as bad as we all played on that side of the ball, we still had two opportunities to win the game running the ball, and we, we didn't get it executed. And that's again on me as the head coach to teach our guys how to execute and perform when the game's on the line. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.